Well, I find myself out here in the, in the woods, in the fields again. We uh, got a generator down and uh, they let too much water get in the gas tank. And you know, water separates. Well, when it went over into the reserve part on the gas tank, it sucked a bunch of water in there. Well, they shut it down and left it sit like that. So we got to pull, I don't know if you can see my hands are dirty or not. Got to pull the whole system down and uh, get all the water out and then clean everything because they let it sit like that. When it does, um, if there's just a little bit of gas in there, it causes, it's weird how it causes algae to grow in the carburetor. It's really weird how it works and it don't take very long. So we're going to get in there, pull it all apart, spray it all out, put it all back together. And then it should fire up and work fine. But um, I had to take the car out here because the truck is otherwise occupied. But, um, you know, after contending last night and a little bit today and just reading through some things and listening to some different things, my heart is real heavy because the things that should be important to people or the things that you would think would be important to people aren't important to people. And the things that don't really matter to anything, that's what everybody gets bent out of shape over to the point that they hate others because of it. And I don't understand that. I just cannot grasp that concept. I mean, there's comments and posts that I've read that are just horrible to other people over nothing, over something so small and insignificant. And I just, I, could, I can't grasp doing that. You know, let's talk about something that's really important. Let's get upset about things that are really important. And I'm still, I'm witnessing people that think they're contending for what they think is true. But it's all false and it doesn't match what the scripture says. And it's all based in misunderstanding. And it's easy to fix, but they don't want to listen. And then when people ask for prayer, when people are putting out requests, none of these people acknowledge it. They don't stop what they're doing to go and offer prayer to these people. I find that disturbing. Because if they're calling themselves Christians, why aren't they praying? Well, basically it's because they think anybody who disagrees with them is not their brother or sister. It's not about them. And it becomes real disheartening. It becomes real... It becomes real discouraging to see that kind of behavior and to see people doing that to each other and you know you just got to get away from it for a while that's why i'm out here working on in the field working on generator i needed a break but um and then trying and trying to talk to people and trying to share the truth and being nice and being kind and 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 you know custom tailoring your wording just so it, it doesn't offend anybody and it just brings more wrath than if you stood your ground and went right back at them harder than what they came at you. You know, I tried the whole nice thing. It does not work. It shows weakness and they come at you three times worse than if you stand your ground and go right back in their face and shut them down before they have a chance to start. Then they go back and they pull back and go, well, you don't have to be so mean. Well, you don't have to be so stupid. You also don't have to be so arrogant and think that you know it all and you don't. I had to tell somebody last night, before you said, I commented, I said, you, you're, you're misunderstanding these certain scriptures. And before you say it, no, you don't. And they commented, like, what do you mean, no, I, no, I don't? It's like, yeah, I, know, I already know what you're going to say. No, you don't. What was I going to say? I know Bible prophecy. And they never commented back. That's what I thought. It gets so discouraging and so infuriating. And then, and then to go to a, so much effort to share truth with them and break down the scriptures and put it all together for them and then just have them spit it back in your face. And it, it makes a person not want to contend anymore. It makes a person not even want to bother, not have those conversations. Just tell them, sorry, um, leave your message at the beep. I'll get back to you when I feel like it, that kind of stuff. So what I want to do tonight, I don't have my notebook with me. I'm out here in the grass. Um, I have a few names to lift up, but we're going to do that on, on, we're going to do that on principle and 
get into some quick prayer and we're gonna we're gonna get into Ephesians 1 because there's some really good stuff in Ephesians 1 to help people understand Ephesians 1 by itself as a chapter proves eternal security and once saved always saved no problem it proves grace through faith no works no no salvation through anything we do it's all about what Christ did it's all about that, that he did this for us because that's that seems to be the big discussion now I mean of course there's the rapture debate there's Babylon there's all this other stuff none of that matters but the whole thing about salvation Sissy showed me somebody uh, again on one of her comments talking about being sent oh you can absolutely I went like six days last week without being sinless congratulations you achieve somebody only one other human in the history of mankind has ever achieved that's amazing I find that astounding that's what I commented <laughs> but I, when people say that it's like really so I guess when you were gossiping with the girls, that wasn't a sin. Oh, I don't act on my thoughts. Okay. I've just, I've grown so tired of it. Just, just tired of trying. People have made their decision. And I've gotten to the point now where I'm really focused on reading their comments close to see if it looks like they're not really asking a question. They're just contending for what they think is right. And they're looking for an argument, looking for a fight. But. Ephesians 1 is such a good chapter because it proves all these things clearly and without a shadow of a doubt. But these, this is one of those chapters, just like Ephesians 5, talking about the bride, it's one of those chapters they refuse to read. In fact, most of them ignore the whole book of Ephesians. That's something I found. They wouldn't even quote from the book of Ephesians. I wonder why. It's because it proves them wrong. Let's get into some prayer, guys, because I need some uplifting myself. Oh, and thank you guys for all the prayers. I've been reading y'all's comments. I hit the love button, but it just, sometimes I'm in a hurry and can't comment. But thank you guys for the prayers. It, it, it does help a lot because all the grace preachers and all the watchmen need them. Lord Jesus, we come before you this evening. Me personally, I have a heavy heart. There's so much going on. There's such negativity in the world. And I try not to get angry and I try not to get upset, but I can't help it. Many of my brothers and sisters are the same way. We start contending and it just, it, it's so easy to get frustrated. It's so easy to get, get mad and bent out of shape. And it's tiring. And I, for one, am, am done with it. Because it, it never goes anywhere. But Lord, give us strength to endure. Give us strength to contend. Give us strength and boldness to keep standing up for the truth and standing up for the, for the faith. Standing up for you. Because they're not honoring you and what they're doing. It's it's obvious. And that makes me mad too. That they're they're making it loud like your blood atonement is worthless. Lord, we pray that you show them the truth. But you know what? Hey, that's not even that important. All the people that are suffering from the coronavirus, all the people that are struggling, all the people that are in quarantine, all the people that are are really hurting because of this. Lord, deliver them. Heal them. Bring them out of this. This is such a horrible thing has come on so quick and people were caught off guard by it. But give everybody peace also to know where this is where this comes from and what it why it's here and why we're having to deal with it. Give everybody peace on these things. All the things we see in the world going on. Give everybody peace. Help them to understand exactly what's going on. Help them understand that this is all prophecy. You said these things were going to happen. And we are to not be afraid, but to watch. We're watching, Lord. And we're waiting and we're ready. When will it be time? Lord, I ask you to bless my brothers and sisters richly. I ask you to pour your love and your grace out on them. Pour your mercy out on them. Pour your forgiveness out on them. Pour truth and understanding out on all of them. That they may stand and be bold because many of them are out there contending. Many of them are tired. Strengthen us, build us up, lift us up, empower us to keep doing this until the very minute we're out of here, the very second we leave. Because we may, we never know, we may save one more. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you. All the names that I had in my book, I lift up tonight. You know what their situations are. You know what's going on in their lives. Lord, get into them and, and help that situation. Heal it. Fix it. Create a way. Uh, like only you can. A perfect way. 
Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving us these ministries that we have and for the people we've been able to reach and for the fellowship we have, even if it's just in the comment sections or in emails. It's amazing and it's awesome and it's very inspiring. It is in your name, Lord, we pray and give thanks for all that we have. Amen. All right, guys, let's go into Ephesians 1. Greeting, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee, guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So once saved, always saved, eternal security, 100% proven right here in Ephesians 1. But they don't want to read Ephesians 1. And what's so terrible about this, not infuriating, but terrible, is that if they would read these scriptures, it would lift a burden off of them and free them so much, but they refuse it. Not that they don't want it, they refuse it. They completely push it away. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. How could you make it any clearer and make it any more perfect that it is all about Christ and what he did? And we are the purchased possession. Do you buy a possession? And throw it away before you take possession of it? No. We still have to make it to the day of redemption. That's coming. That's him acquiring his purchased possession. We're sealed until that day. Well, you don't just accidentally become unsealed. You don't accidentally become unborn again. It doesn't work that way. A child doesn't go back into the mother's womb and say, Nah, I don't want to do this. It doesn't work that way. But that's what we have people doing out there. They're taking the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and trampling him underfoot like he's nothing in lieu of their sinlessness and their righteousness. And they're creating this situation where they're making it so his blood, the atonement for all sin, is nothing. And I don't know about you guys, but that makes me mad. Uh, that bothers me that they do that. Not just saying that to, to stand up or, or make myself out to be something. That really does make me angry. Because that's wrong. And they know it's wrong because they've read the scriptures and they gloss right over it and keep on going. Well, but I got to make sure I'm right. No. 
You're not right. He is. I'm not right. He is. None of you, no one is right. Christ is. Thank God he's right. Because if he wasn't right, we wouldn't have salvation. But nope, that's not good enough for them. It's not good enough to say, Lord, you are it. I'm not it. You are it. Thank you for considering me to save me. And all these people trying to be sinless. Oh, I was sinless like seven and a half days last month. So? That did you no good. Christ came for the sinner, not the sinless. He came for the sick because the healthy don't need a physician. That should worry you. Because now you're trying to make it so Christ doesn't have to come save you. If you're being sinless, hello, ding, 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 wake up. If you're sinless, you don't need Jesus. Here's a big news flash. Only one has ever been sinless, and that's him. So you need him. So why are you pushing him on the back and saying, oh, no, 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 I got this, Lord. I got this. I can be good enough. No, you can't. But that's what they do. And we can only do so much. And that's what I have to keep telling myself. I can only do so much. I can only say so much. I can only prove so much. And at a certain point, you just got to give in and say, okay, you're right. I'm, I'm a heretic and I'm going to hell. You're right. And just shut the conversation down and go on. Because when the rapture happens, and it is pre-tribulation, when it happens, all those people who get left here that thought they were Christian, that thought they were saved, are going to stand there and look up and they're going to go, Oh, no, they were right. No kidding. Then they're going to go back and look in the Bible. Oh, look at all these scriptures. Yeah, you think? We've been trying to tell you. But it'll be too late. Now they're going to have to give their life for their salvation. Their life will be required. Suffering will be required. You think it's bad now? Just wait. Wait until the whole earth is on fire. But some people, they're so hard-headed and hard-hearted, that's what they're going to do. Look what the Jews are doing. And those are God's chosen people. Don't mean to get on here and vent like that, guys. I, I really has wear, it really does wear me down because that that attitude is so negative, and I can feel it. And it gets discouraging. It gets disheartening to see that many people. It's getting dark quick. See that many people doing that to themselves, and it's just it's horrendous. I didn't do, I did a little bit. All right, well, it's getting dark, so I got to get out here and get this finished up. I love you guys. I don't like doing this stuff like this because I feel like it brings a lot of negativity into the video. Because I'm trying, I want to uplift you guys. I want you guys to feel good about this stuff and, and be empowered and be edified. But you know what? I'm human and I get tired. So tired. Because I'm just at the point where I don't know what to say. I don't know what scripture I can share. I've shared all of them. I don't know what conversation I can share, what blog I can share, what what information can I share that ha I haven't already shared that they just won't go, well, that's somebody's opinion. Well, no, it's loaded with scripture. Go look at the scripture, dork. That's why I linked you to it. Well, if you can't give me a scripture, I did. That's what was in the link, stupid. Go look at it. They won't even look at it. They won't even look at it because they so desperately don't want to be proven wrong. But we can only do what we can do. We can only say what we can say. We can only share what we can share. We can only present what we can present. And that's it. And it's sad. And they're going to, many of them, not all of them, but many of them are going to have to suffer needlessly. But whatever. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. It's getting so dark. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you guys in the next video.